truth is very interesting and powerful. Truth has this amazing power that when you hear truth, there are a few possible outcomes. Most people, when they hear truth, may go into denial and they will just no, there's no way that's possible. Okay? So they become completely closed minded. This is partly because of the ramifications of the truth. Because this is the other thing about truth. When you hear truth it kind of it kind of hits you. So you have a an understanding that this is true. Then you start to see how this one truth can make other things you think untrue or true. But it has ramifications through your understanding. So this is why many people will just flatly deny it. But those people with an open mind can take on that new truth and start to see where they've been in error. The most destructive force in the universe is the false belief that we have about ourselves and what we are. Because if we knew this, the other truths would come. So what we are is a physical body, a spiritual body within that physical body, but then we have a soul, and the soul is dominant to all the other things. And our soul was created by God, and we're all unique. And God is our mother and father in the universe, and we are eternal beings. <laughs> yeah, right? So this little life we have is this much of what we're going to live. And if we got the truth, and we got the correct beliefs, everything else would fall into place. I've been learning about the will, our will. You know, I know God is good. I've known that for a long time. And so I've wanted to be good, yeah? But, you know, maybe sometimes I want to be bad. And if I'm honest with myself, sometimes I do want to be bad. So, God prefer it if I did what I want, because that's my will. So if I decide to do something bad, and something bad happens as a result of it, and I, I get my recompense or whatever, then I learn something. But while I think, oh no, I shouldn't do that because it's not good, then I'm not doing what I want to do and God won't be very happy because he wants me to do what I want to do right and it's only by doing what we want to do that we learn our errors in our soul which were originally not really our fault but you know we need to learn errors blah 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 so we know what's right and wrong but if we're just pretending to be good then we're not gonna learn the lessons and you know God must have known this and this is my sort of things I ponder at the moment is how much you know how much of the way the world has gone did God plan and did God know was going to happen and if we understand that God is like you know you could say infinitely I'm not sure about that, but let's say massively greater than all of us and, um, you know, infinitely wise or whatever, that of course you would know that things are going to be just like they are. But that's what I'm thinking about lately is like, you know, what's his plan? Our will, our free will is the, is the greatest thing we've got. We've got this physical life here for about a hundred odd years. And then we've got life in the spirit world for however many thousand years. But, you know, that's so long in the future. I mean, you know, now. This, we've got to live for now, haven't we? Okay. You know, it's good to know the truth, but you can't just sort of think, well, I'll plan for a few hundred thousand years down the line. Because you just don't have a clue what's going to be down the line, you know. And I've got this life, and I'm going to live this life. And I'm going to do, do what I want. I'm going to act on my will. I'm going to say to someone what I think, what I feel like thinking. You know, and every now and then, in days, I get this feeling like I can do anything I want. And it's, I feel so good when you remember that. 
I will be thinking about the thoughts that come into my head and and thinking about the fact that God is all feeling and thinking, well, if God's an all feeling soul, right, and our souls are all feeling, he can't hear me play guitar then. All he's gonna he she is gonna feel is the feelings of my soul while I'm playing guitar and singing. But you know, I was thinking, surely, you know, God, right? Should be able to do anything he wants, you know. And if, <laughs> yeah, right. Why, why the heck would he want to <laughs> listen to me singing, right? I'm sure he's heard much better singing before. So you know, he gets what's important. But then I did think, well, if animals don't have souls, then in a sense, they must be the eyes and ears of God, and the fingers of God. So you start thinking of yourself as an eternal being. Right, you're either going to think of yourself as an eternal being or a finite being. Whether that's a hundred years or ten thousand years, it's still going to have, you know, if you think of yourself as a finite being, a hundred years or ten thousand years, there's still going to be that end, right? That end of existence. Now, I don't know any human being who can actually I know some people say, yeah, it'll go black and I'll die, yeah, no, that's it, that'll be it. You know, and they, fine, you know, you live your life like that, that's not a problem, that's fine. It's probably a good way to live in a way. And you find out <laughs> that it, you're wrong and it carries on. But um, there's no way my soul can uh, accept that ceasing to exist. So then you must say, well, we're going to be eternal. And that. <laughs> That's almost as hard to swallow, isn't it? Forever. That's tough. I mean, that, that's mind blowing. And yeah, our, our spiritual mind can barely cope with that. But our soul can, so that's okay. The feeling of it, the feeling of living forever is, is fine by me. You live in the now anyway, don't you? But, you know, it's still quite a heavy thing. Um, but so, we've got this short life, it'd be good to be live perfect, but most of us aren't, well, probably all of us aren't, so don't worry about it too much, but uh, yeah, start living, living how you want to live, do what you want to do, achieve what you want to achieve in the short time you've got here. We don't know how long, do we? We don't know when, we, when, when it might end, you know, whether we live into old age or what. Since my last video, about eight hours later, I decided to fly to America. <laughs> so I'm just going to get on with this. Sunday, October 19th, 2014, 10.40am. Sitting with a warm bum on my bag, feeling a bit of a moron for being so rash, but faith holding out for getting the ne on next flight. Realised I have had disagreements with God in my younger age. This one is about me wanting to be my way, my way, even when it breaks one of God's laws. It should be God's way to get in the right tracks and progress. Feel the emotions about all that happens as an error inside yourself. I must learn to play by the rules, law of attraction, love, truth, humility, reap what you sow. Whatever happens, I enjoy the interactions with the people here, mostly the staff. It's reminding me of my dream, the funny one. I love you, I love you, I love you. That was like something at the end of my dream. October 19th, 2014, 11pm, America time. And through customs and finally here. When we're in our mother's wombs, we are with God, the mother and the father of our soul. We can feel emotions from all around. Then we are born and become, and because God does not have a body, we start to confuse our earthly mother-father with the God-mother-father. And if our earthly M&D don't teach in line with God, 
then we begin our descent. We start to argue with God like wanting our own way all the time, and by the time we are three we have left God and we descend th further. We have to feel all these errors and get back to the full relationship with God. October the 20th, 4am. The future to a degree is laid out for you. When your eyesight is clear you are accepting your future. When unclear you are not. This info comes from opposite gender God. God that plays with you is same gender God. So you'll be more familiar with him, her. For me, male, Mother God does past and future, Father God the now, Mother God nurture, Father God provider. By the way, I'm just, you know, I'm not actually saying this is absolutely um, definite, but it's the feeling I get and I need to feel more about it to know more fully. When we trust in our godparents, all will be revealed to us by the events that come our way. We will be looked after and guided. Look to the skies for guidance. Walk the path of least resistance. For all is for you. Patience is often required and faith. Our fall from grace. We are in the womb knowing our mother and father God. We are aware of our soul's personality. We then start to confuse God with our earthly parents, the mother first, as we are inside our mother. The battle begins. When we are born and start to see, hear and touch, and these things conflict with what we feel in our soul, we start to prefer the earthly things to the things of the soul. Our mother and father God do what they can to help us, but our earthly mother and father become dominant, and after two or three years of this, mother and father God get rejected by our own free will. We come away from sixth, seventh sphere living because it becomes too painful. Now we're still guided by them, but from a distance, and still there is no running away from your own soul. <clears throat> So all events in your life now will be designed to get you to return to God. An inevitable future no matter how long it takes and whether you manage it while you're alive or after you pass. But the longer it takes, the more uncomfortable it will be. Adolescence is another common period when we blame our parents rightly for their error. But generally we end up conforming to that way and we will repeat the error when we have children. After that we get further and further from God <clears throat> and it starts to show in our physical bodies. What makes you feel good? You could argue that smoking a cigarette makes you feel good if you are a smoker but it's the feeling afterwards that is longer lasting and usually for me anyway after I've chosen to smoke I don't feel good. When I choose not to smoke not only do I feel better but the craving for a smoke lessens. As I have used cannabis to temporarily get close to God, I know both these feelings well. <clears throat> yeah, because when I'm coming down from the cannabis, then I get the feeling that I'm getting away from God, which is, is very unpleasant. It has, though, helped me to understand what and who God is, and strengthened my resolve to day by day, through truth, love and humility, progress on the path to God. God's reward to us for making the right choices is to make us feel good, and that is the answer. All temptations of the flesh are just for the flesh, where we need to feel good is in our soul, as this will radiate through our bodies, giving healing strength and energy, not to mention passion and desire and creativity. Get to know yourself. Why do you do what you do, and why you think what you think? Once your belief systems are in line with the truth, you'll naturally progress on the right path, making you better and better. You'll then enjoy the experience of interacting with others more and more. Eventually, then you'll be able to interact with God, rather than constantly guessing at his her ways. The soul has no tongue, it is all feeling. The tongue is the taster, the sampler, the wayfinder. The physical body is the soul's tongue in the physical world. 
both good and evil can be consumed. The spiritual body is in the soul's is the soul's tongue in the spirit world. No evil can be consumed. Question mark. Question mark. Now imagine, imagine you're God. Okay, that's not a sin. Just to sort of speculate upon if you were a God and you'd created these seven billion souls uh, that were going to be existing for eternity and uh, you'd created a universe and, an, and a nice planet for them to live on but you knew that they needed to learn some lessons in order to live for eternity and you create the first two humans in a sixth sphere state 15 foot tall awesome beautiful creatures and uh, needing only water to live on okay and you put them on the earth now God is an all-loving God and he isn't gonna say to the first two humans you're not allowed to do this they have free will we have been given free will now so first of all we come to the Bible I'm using this the New English Bible is very good and we start here with man's disobedience the serpent was more crafty than any wild creature that the Lord God had made he said to the woman is it true that God has forbidden you to eat from any tree in the garden the woman answered the serpent we may eat the fruit from any tree in the garden except for the tree in the middle of the garden God has forbidden us to eat or touch the fruit of that if we do we shall die that is a lie the serpent said, of course you will not die. That is true. God knows that as soon as you eat it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God's. Well, that's not quite true either. But your eyes will be opened, knowing both good and evil. Well, that's true. Now, wouldn't God want us to know about good and evil? He, he's created us. He wants us to learn. Okay? So in order to learn, we need to know what's right and wrong. So why would he ever forbid that? The truth is that we are allowed to do what we want. And the truth is that this Bible has got lies in it right from the beginning. Adam and Eve had a child. Okay? Cain, and then they had Abel. So there's the original sin that's being created by the first two humans. All right? So that is going to get passed down onto absolutely everybody. And that's the first lesson. We are not equal to God. We are children of God. And therefore need to learn from God. Need to be humble. Humble to God. right? Humble to learning. Humble that we are in the beginning stages. Now God would have known that. You know that isn't going to be the only sin committed. That you know more sins must be committed. So we come to the the next sin, when Cain kills his brother and then lies about it. Basically, there are laws of the universe in place, so that you know Cain's life turned to shit afterwards after he'd done this crime because of karma. Then God marked Cain and said that anyone who does anything to you will be avenged sevenfold. Let's see how he's worded. If anyone kills Cain. Cain shall be avenged sevenfold. And it says kill, but it wouldn't just be kill, so it would be anyone who does anything to Cain will get that avengement sevenfold. So if someone slaps Cain round the face, they will get that karma back on them seven times as much. They would have started to notice that um, anyone does anything to Cain's descendants, you know, they get they get the karma back seven times as much. Cain's descendants, it tells us here, Cain lay with his wife and then she conceived and bore Enoch. Cain was building a city which he named Enoch after his son. Enoch begot Irad, Irad begot Mehujuel, Mehujuel begot Methushuel, Methushuel begot Lamech. Lamech married two wives. Okay, now we've got the third sin. Okay, 
because that's a sin because we're all being given a soulmate so obviously if you're taking two wives you're taking somebody else's soulmate that's not quite fair is it called Ada and Zilla Cain may be avenged seven times but Lamech 77 Lamech said to his wives Ada and Zilla listen to me wives of Lamech mark what I say I kill a man for wounding me a young man for a blow. Cain may be avenged seven times, but Lamech seventy-seven. You wonder why sometimes people walk out and f get run over by a bus. Maybe they did something bad to one of Lamech's descendants. Okay, right. This is this is God's way of quickening the process. The other child that Adam and Eve had that's mentioned in the Bible was Seth. Now they had others, so it wasn't just these. Now Seth was 105 years old when he begot Enosh. After the birth of Enosh he lived 807 years. He had other sons and daughters. He lived 912 years and then he died. Enosh was 90 years old when he begot Canaan. After the birth of Canaan, da -da, Canaan begot Mahalalal. And then after Mahalalal there was Jared. And after that there was Enoch, another Enoch. Now Enoch's quite special. Enoch was 65 years old when he begot Meth Methuselah. After the birth of Methuselah, Enoch walked with God for 300 years and had other sons and daughters. He lived 365 years. That's the shortest so far. Now, Adam's still alive at this point. Having walked with God, Enoch was seen no more because God had taken him away. So what do you think God and Enoch talked about for 300 years to then eventually, must have been Enoch's will, that God take him away? Well, it seems to me that it might be that, you know, he's looking over at Cain's line and he's saying, well, you know, this is making them pretty powerful, you know, we do anything to Cain's line and we get really bad karma. You know, we have to be nice to them in a sense. Well, we're nice to them, and maybe they get 77 times the, the greater, right? So think about that. And, you know, maybe he wasn't too happy about that. You know, maybe he thought that was unfair. I can only speculate. I believe there is a book of Enoch. I'd like to hear it. Uh, that'd be my next thing. But let's just say for speculation, Enoch wasn't quite happy with this arrangement and after all that time spending with God said actually you know I'd just rather go and live in the spirit world. Methuselah was 187 when he begot Lamech so this is a different Lamech not a Lamech in Cain's line this is a Lamech in Seth's line. After the birth of Lamech he lived for 782 years and had other sons and daughters he lived 969 years so you see they're living quite long. Lamech was 182 years when he begot a son he named him Noah saying this boy will bring us relief from our work and from the hard labor that has come upon us because of the Lord's curse upon the ground. So Enoch goes, Enoch's son Methuselah, he's you know he's obviously aware of Enoch's issues um, but you know he has a slightly different take on it so he gives birth to Lamech and maybe Lam Lamech knows about this and obviously when he gives birth to Noah and all this stuff about Noah will bring us relief so this is maybe their plan to curse stroke reward their own line and hoping perhaps that their curse as Cain's was 7, Lamech's was 77, they want theirs to be 777, seven, seven, right? So that everybody has to treat them really well. Now, Lamech lived 777 years and then he died. Right? So he doesn't say how old he died. No, it was 500 years old when we got Shem, Ham and Japheth. So, it could be that Lamech said to Noah, look, when I'm 777, you kill me and then we'll get hopefully get this curse of 777 so let's just assume that it didn't work 
this is man's plan here to make uh, Noah's line or or Methuselah, you know, that line of Seth, apart from Cain, to make them renowned, to make them big. Because, you know, this, that was, that's the stuff that was going on in the beginning of the world. And it's still, still today, the, the full truth hasn't been uncovered. It will be uncovered. It's God's plan that it all should be, and it will be in all good time.